faces again. Hopefully you're having a fun day so far in Formative. The way you want to come over on this side, just most of the stuff is over here. <laughs> So what we're trying to show here is uh, showcase a couple of uh, key technologies that we believe are only possible if you have the end-to-end -end solution. So we've said for a while that as we move into 5G, uh, just having a modem separately or our front-end design separately is not going to cut it anymore. And uh, we introduced a lot of technologies in LTE and knew that the path forward, uh, we need them for the path forward into 5G. So I'm going to talk about five of the five examples that showcase that. Um, I know our speakers earlier this morning talked about the end-to-end -end system for modem, RF, RF front-end antennas. Uh, so here I'm showing actual technologies that have been commercialized or are soon to be commercialized or maybe expanded in, in, in the next generation uh, to allow you know, full performance uh, in 5G devices uh, at, at acceptable power consumption levels or thermal levels and, and so on. And then of, of those five, I've picked one to go a little deeper on so you can actually see what the impact is beyond what's, what's, what's the obvious. Um, so the five, five uh, cases I've picked, one is of course millimeter wave, right? We've said uh, consistently that you just can't tackle millimeter wave if you don't look at it holistically and put all, all the tools in the box to address the, the, the millimeter wave challenges. So which is why we've had a, we've developed this uh, completely integrated millimeter wave module that works closely with the modem and combines all the uh, uh, the RF and RF components, antenna elements, all into one package. So that you just can't do that if you don't have a systems perspective. Uh, the second technology is called smart transmit. It allows OEMs um, to manage um, an uplink. Uh, sorry maximize uplink throughput while managing the transmit power to meet compliance limits. Uh, with 5G that's become a, more of a tricky problem so this, this toolbox lets them allows them to do that and the framework we put into, into place is possible only because we have again modem to antenna uh, capabilities. The third one is envelope tracking but in this particular case I'm calling it wideband envelope tracking because in 5G the bandwidths even in sub 6 have gone up. 100 megahertz uplink, in some cases up to 200 megahertz. So, being able to manage the, the power consumption for those wide bandwidths is key uh, to make devices more practical in, in 5G. So, envelope tracking has been a key technology in enabling that. Then we have signal boost, or it's our portfolio of antenna tuning technologies. Very key uh, innovations that are gone into place that allow the control of the front end from the modem in order to respond to various conditions, um, various scenarios, condition, user conditions, network conditions to, again, optimize uh, device performance at all times. The fifth one is a collection of technologies uh, that we call PowerSafe. These were essentially put together for the sole purpose of uh, coordinating between the device and the network uh, to, to reduce power consumption. So intelligently working closely with the network to make sure that the power, power consumption is at a minimum at, at the device. And I'll, I'll go a little bit into uh, some of these in more detail. So smart transmit is something we haven't talked about a lot, so I'll start with that. Uh, this is um, uh, this is a key innovation that we've already commercialized. It should be in uh, a few millimeter wave devices that are launched in the U.S. So it's it's not something that we will be launching. It's already out in the market in devices. And uh, the challenge that this this technology was built for was that uh, you know for any transmitter, you FCC or the regulators they have they put in limits to how much they can transmit in terms of power. And as, as you have more and more radios in your phone, uh, whether it's 5G, 4G, 2G, Wi-Fi, and so on, you need a way to manage the total output power that's being transmitted from the device and do it dynamically. And that, that changes with objects around, around it. Uh, it changes with the industrial design of the phone, what materials were used, what, where the antennas are placed, and all that. So this system that we built is basically, again, modem and RF working together to help manage multiple radios to optimize uplink at all times while while uh, keeping uh, the transmit limits in check. <coughs> so that what happens is 
uh, if you are coming close to the limit, usually or historically you have to back off quite a bit. So you have to give up a lot of uh, a lot of power, which which could have helped you, but you didn't need to back off that much. Uh, with this uh, with this solution, you can actually optimize uh, uplink. Uh, so you're, you're you're getting as as close to the to the limit as you're allowed to, uh, without giving up too much. Excuse me. Uh, so how do, does it fit with uh, Android trafficking, and uh, how different is it? Um, so it'll work on top of. I mean, I've, uh, envelope tracking basically helps um, minimize power consumption. It's uh, it does not keep track of what's 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 uh, the compliance limit. This will sit on top of that and make sure that ET is not not performing too well. You want to see, you know, so just keeping uh, keeping the uh, transmit power in check. Uh, PowerSafe is another collection of technologies uh, for specifically built for 5G, um, and we've uh, we've only disclosed one key one called, and it's built into the standard. It's called CDRX, not a very fancy name, but that's what what the technical term is. It's connected mode to continuous reception. What it uh, what it does is it gives the modem the capability to work up with the network. Uh, to determine what's the right time to shut off the receive channel and it can do it in very short intervals so that even even if there's a small break in data or even in, in a voice call when I pause to talk it actually turns off the receive channel so that the active monitoring and signal decoding function which is pretty power hungry is uh, is turned off and that ends up saving you uh, significant amounts of power so in, in various scenarios we've seen up to 2 to 3x reduction in power consumption uh, just by, by having this feature. And then uh, and as, a, as a package, PowerSave uh, is a collection of technologies, but it's the only one we're currently disclosing for competitive reasons. Um, I just want to touch on antenna tuning a bit before we move on. Uh, so we've, we've actually had this antenna tuning system in place for a few years, and it becomes even more useful and important in, in 5G. Uh, so the underlying um, principle is that if you allow the OEM to control the front end, which has been historically notorious to control because there's a lot of fine tuning that goes into it and uh, dedicated hardware, but if we can build in software controls to tune your front end to optimize dynamically for different scenarios and use the modem intelligence to actually do that through software feedback and control, then you, you know, it, it enables a lot of use cases. Uh, that the OEMs can use this technology for. I have a few here. One is being able to dynamically tune your transmit and receive chains on the fly as needed, depending on conditions. So as soon as you bring your hand next to an antenna, its characteristics change, it detunes the antenna a bit, and the system can respond to that and make sure you're always optimal. And then you can do that for multiple carriers, whether it's uh, dual connectivity between 5G and 4G, or carrier aggregation across multiple carriers and so on. Some OEMs are also using it for detuning, so that antennas that are supposed to be off are not sucking any energy, so it gives them a smart way to turn on and off antennas or detune them. Um, allows a better antenna sharing and coexistence, improves uh, dual SIM um, operation, especially if you have current pages and current data signals or packets coming into uh, both your SIMs. Uh, the tunability helps optimize that so you're not missing pages, for example. The last one is interesting, so we're seeing interest from OEMs um, in something called gaming mode boost. And what that does is, uh, in 5G, latency is important, especially to gamers. So uh, with this with this uh, solution, as as the gamer is moving his hands around the device and its latency is changing, we can ad adapt to that and switch to different antennas or the best available antenna on the fly in very short time intervals and do that dynamically. So that overall helps you maintain a low latency uh, as needed. So antenna tuning both software and hardware? All of these technologies are both hardware and software. So how many antenna tuning devices per antenna? Like, do you, is there a rule or is it, is it per very... Phone, typically per, per antenna you have two at most. Yeah. But then in a device you can have nine, ten antennas these days. Yeah. So it's not uncommon to see, like even in uh, the late 4G, early 5G phones, it's not uncommon to see five or six tuners on the phone, and I think it just go off from there. 
could uh, could an OEM use a third party tuning product and still benefit from the software side of Qualcomm's? Uh, yes and no. So there's two types of tuners. I think I've, so. There's the aperture tuner, which is like. Uh, it's a lower end simple switching tuner which have been around for a while and then there's the bread and, bread and butter from Qualcomm the impedance tuner that's where the software controllability is built in uh, so there's many aperture tuners you can plug them in and out if needed some of them there are there are, you can get benefits by working if you're working with the Qualcomm one because we, we sell both uh, but impedance tuners have to work with the Qualcomm solution so it's in the front end module by Qualcomm the impedance tuner uh, it's 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 a separate chip, um, so it's not built into the module for sub six because these are all separate uh, discrete components. So what I'm going to do is switch over to the other screen, uh, and uh, I've picked one technology, envelope tracking, uh, to just showcase you know what's the level of impact just one of these technologies can have, and then I'd love. I'd love it if we had like three, four hours to talk or even had the resources to build demos for all five technologies. Uh, but this this demo is, is um, it really helps highlight what you know, things that are, are not that obvious when you talk about something like model tracking. So historically when you know people familiar with ET, when they think of ET, they think of, yeah, it's a way to save battery life or reduce uh, RF current. But it goes well beyond that, and that's really what uh, the demo shows here. So, to give you some background on what ET is, I'm not sure if all of you are familiar with envelope tracking, uh, but uh, in a signal that has lots of peaks and valleys, which was the case in LTE, and it's even worse in, in 5G and R, where there's a lot of peaks and lots of valleys, and the most of the time, you, you, the signal is, is you know, has low amplitude. So if you were to supply power for that to the power amplifier, and if you designed it to, to meet the peaks, then you're over-designing it. There's a lot of power being wasted to support the peaks because 95% of the time you're spending time in the valleys. So what we did was, um, you know, the intermediate solution or the 